a simple guide to what a keto diet is, isn't, and what it could be for you. Hello, my name is Dominic. I am a registered nurse, a father of six. I am not receiving any specific compensation for this video or the information put in. However, I will be sharing some websites and products that I have found through personal use, informative on trying to achieve a better diet and a better path for help. I'm currently at 265 pounds. Um, I hit a max of 288 a couple months ago and have made some simple changes in my life to correct that. Uh, my A1C was high for those that are already informed on that. Um, but in an effort to be healthier, uh, not only for myself, for my wife, for my kids, and for my household, uh, I've done a lot of homework and some research over the last couple of years about especially the keto diet. Now, another disclaimer, I've had several friends go almost complete carnivore and they've lost weight and felt better. I've had a couple friends go almost complete vegetarian and have lost weight and felt better. So this is an individual thing. You have to find what works for your body. That includes experimentation and understanding the feedback loop of how your body responds and adjusting accordingly. So the basic premise is we're trying to reteach our bodies to burn fat healthier than using carbohydrates for energy. I'm pulling from several sources. I've read Keto Clarity by Johnny Moore. Uh, I've researched um, Harvard Health Publishing, Healthline, WebMD, uh, a lot of information online, including being a part of the discussions in the different social media platforms about uh, how different individuals have gone through their journey, plus experimenting myself over the last two years. My wife and I were pretty strict keto last year, and we did see weight loss. Um, we jokingly said it's really hard between Thanksgiving and Super Bowl to maintain that type of diet. Um, and again, we're in that time period again this year. So deciding what to eat and how to eat is always a, a struggle, especially in a household with a lot of kids and holidays and family gatherings. So understanding the basics of what keto is and how it's supposed to work in your body scientifically can give you kind of a guide to how you're going to choose what you're going to eat in volumes and in products. So let's start with the basics. So the goal of a keto diet is to put your body into a state of ketosis where you're burning fat for energy instead of carbohydrates or sugars. And fat tends to burn a little more evenly. Um, to give an example, I like to say a diesel in a vehicle or in a truck would be like burning fats. It's even, it's steady. Uh, eating sugars and carbs is like having a Danish and putting nitro in your car. It's fast, it's quick, it burns hot but you also come down quickly after that. So obviously in a very healthy diet, we're gonna want a little bit of either, but when a lot of us are overweight like myself, we want a more even burn, we don't want those spikes, and we want to be able to use up all that energy and then some. So the theory is, if I've got a lot of extra fat and I'm teaching my body to burn fat and then it runs out of the energy that I've eaten, then it's gonna use up the fat I have in my body. Seems pretty sound and simple, doesn't it? It is in the individual and how we each burn fat or create ketones differently. That's what you have to take into account. You could see online several types of keto diet. Some are targeted, some are certain percentages, not super important at the first part. You really get fine tuned in how your body works. That'll be more important. But in the beginning, you're looking to reduce your carb intake and we'll go through a list of what those are, including some vegetables you'd be surprised about and increase your good fats and proteins. This is similar to what the Atkins diet was several years ago. The downside to the Atkins diet was, a lot of people didn't realize, high protein intake creates sugar. Your body can churn protein into sugar. Since your body's good at burning sugar, and if you don't have enough caloric intake, your body can churn proteins into sugar, which is called gluconeogenesis. I think I'm saying that correctly. Uh, diabetics can go through this uh, in a severe state. so. That's where your body can actually break down your own proteins, your own meat, your muscles to produce sugar to keep you alive. So if a high protein diet without fats, without carbohydrates, you're still going to create sugar and you're still going to tap into your insulin to be able to use that. So it can get a little complicated in that process. So something we want to be careful about, you can't just eat tons of protein any way you want. 
It's healthy fats with good proteins and reducing your carbohydrates and especially your sugars. There are some studies out there that show weight loss in a ketogenic diet being two to three times that of a regular low fat diet. I could see why this happens, but again, it's individualized. I'm sure they were studying people that wanted to be on ketogenesis and, and that keto diet work with their bodies. Again, I know vegetarians have lost weight, but an important factor to start here is it's called the honeymoon factor. This applies to several parts of our life, whether it's a real honeymoon with a new partner or uh, a new car that you love until you find out that the seatbelts don't really fit or there's a quirky box that's not where you need it. The same goes for diets. Any diet will probably help you lose weight in the beginning. Cabbage soup diets, celery, peanut butter with the raisin diets, uh, ants on a log, right? Any change, any drastic change to your diet, you're going to immediately lose weight because your body's not used to it. So if you're eating danishes and donuts every morning and all of a sudden you're eating nothing but avocados and almonds, you're going to lose weight the first period. But is that sustainable and healthy for your life? And at some point, our body's going to self-regulate and find a new norm. The human body always finds a way to adapt. That's why we live everywhere from the Arctic to the middle of the desert to the jungles. The only place we don't live naturally is in the ocean. We just haven't figured that one out yet. The honeymoon phase is a temporary situation that your body's in as you adjust to a new diet. Let me define the word diet. Diet actually means what you eat, the consistency of your intake. We commonly use the word diet to signify that we're changing what we're eating in an effort to change our health, whether we're losing weight, gaining weight, reducing our salt because of a cardiac condition. But biologically, diet means whatever you eat. So I'm going to use the word interchangeably. Diet to mean what you eat. Truly, to make a big difference, it's a lifestyle change. And I'm very honest with myself about that. And I encourage you to be too. I can't go on a split pea soup diet. I don't care for peas and it's only temporary. A cabbage soup diet's not going to work because it's temporary and you can't live on that. A temporary detox, taking something or a supplement or cabbage soup for a week or two to change your body's metabolism, to flush waste products, that's different. That's a temporary situation. But truly, to change your lifestyle is the only thing that's going to be sustainable. I've been very honest about the incremental changes in my life that have been health improvements. I was almost 300 pounds. My A1C was pre-diabetic. In an effort to increase my health and my longevity and my quality of life, I'm making lifestyle changes. Perfect example, I used to drink a cola product in a red can every day, several times a day for a long time not good for me. The corn syrup and the other products in there, not good for you in the long run. We all know that. I switched to a similar product that was, I switched to a different product in their line that was in a black can and, and diet and didn't have the corn syrup. It tastes good to me and uh, was still part of my habit, but not great for me in the long run. We know that. I was even drinking uh, a diet version of those energy drinks really not good for us. We are seeing how bad they are for our health and stroke and heart attack increasing. So I, I've slowly gotten off all those products. Now when I'm really craving a soda, now when I'm really craving a soda, we make our own at home. We use a we use our own soda making device at home. It happens to be called the Soda Stream. It's available at a lot of stores and online. Again, no compensation here, but we're able to make our own sodas, whether they're diet or regular or fruit juices. This was pomegranate season. I made pomegranate sodas. It was great. We made a chai tea soda the other day. Really interesting. It was pretty good. But we're not ingesting all the soda that we used to, the corn syrups and the caffeines and, and the things that we know aren't good for us in the long run. Slow, sustainable lifestyle changes. That's what's key. Back to keto. Talking about lifestyle changes with a keto diet. Understanding how much carbs and sugars are in your daily diet, in what you eat every day, is what's important to make the change. Lots of good books, lots of great websites. There's people on all different social media platforms that will help you. But I really suggest you do your homework. One of the key things to a strong ketogenic stasis in your body is measuring it. This gets important when you know your body gone into ketosis and you know you're burning fats. 
There's typically two ways to test that in your blood or in your urine. Blood is more accurate, but a little more expensive, and it's not as fun to be pricking your finger all the time. And then testing your urine is very simple and fairly cheap with uh, urine dipsticks that you pee on, and it'll tell you how much ketones are coming out. Those are good ways to measure where you're at. But again, if you're in a ketogenic diet for a long period of time, your urine's going to change because your body's adapting and you're not going to see as much ketones come out through your kidneys. So it's not a perfect measurement for a long period of time. It does kind of help you kickstart what you're doing and know that it's working because you've changed your diet drastically. So let's start with what you can't eat. Simple. Sugar, carbohydrates. Candy bars, bread, pasta, beans and legumes, root vegetables like potatoes and sweet potatoes, yams, parsnips, carrots. I've never even had a parsnip. And definitely corn. You also want to limit your intake of unhealthy fats like certain processed oils and margarine. Those aren't great for us anyway. Even nuts and most fruits have carbs in them, so you want to limit them, if not eliminate them, in the beginning. We'll get more into when adding stuff makes sense. And finally, alcohol. That's a tough one. Some alcohols have a lot of carbs in them, such as beers and mixed drinks like daiquiris and margaritas. Couldn't think of the name. And some have very little carbs, like high-end vodkas and even some of the whiskeys and tequilas. Most alcohols have a sugar in them, so those can throw you out of ketosis. However, there's a second factor with most alcohol. It tends to lower our inhibitions, making it easier to fall off our meal plan or what we're going to eat and drink. If at all possible, eliminate it, especially in the beginning of this lifestyle change. Okay, so what can we eat? Red meat, ham, pork, chicken, turkey... Fish, especially fatty fishes like tuna and mackerel and salmon are good for you. Butters and cream are great fats. You want to find healthy versions. There's a great Irish butter you can get at Costco. Cheeses. You want unprocessed cheese as much as possible. And you want the whole milk, full fat versions if at all possible. If you've ever tasted the difference between a low fat, skinny mozzarella and a whole fat, whole milk mozzarella, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Avocados are great on the list of things you can eat. Nuts and seeds, we'll get back to those and when you should add them to your diet and being careful which ones. And the good vegetables, mostly the dark greens, onions, peppers. You want to be careful with tomatoes. They do have some natural carbs in them. Interestingly, a whole tomato it has less carbs than like a tomato paste or tomato sauce because it's been concentrated. Do your homework, look at your labels, get to know how to read your labels, and you'll know exactly how many carbs you're having as you try to reduce them to start this ketosis in your own body. Do I have to have this big crazy carnivore plate in front of me to be in ketosis? No, you just gotta be a little more careful. So an easy hack is you get your double-double protein style without ketchup. That's a very ketogenic friendly lunch at In-N-Out. Obviously no fries, you'd rather have water, but even a diet soda is better than the other choices. Same goes for most restaurants. You can find keto-friendly options. More and more restaurants and fast food joints are supporting this. I wonder if Arby's has one. I love Mexican food. So getting a bowl with the meats and the cheeses and lettuce and salsa, sour cream and olives without the tortilla can save you the extra calories and keep you in that ketogenic state. I find breakfast the easiest because... An egg and cheese and some bacon or a piece of ham is an easy meal option. Dessert, obviously, is the hardest. There's some neat recipes out there for keto-friendly desserts. You'd have to do some experimenting and see what works for you. But interestingly, whole cream is in the diet. And you could do a lot with whole cream or cream cheese. Do some homework and research. You'll find some interesting options out there. So this is where I'm going to get to my first product plug. My wife and I are part of the It Works family and they have some really neat health and wellness and beauty products. She's enjoying the beauty products. Obviously, uh, I have naturally wonderful lashes and skin. So the Keto Coffee has been a great addition to my daily routine because of the MCT oils and the grass-fed butter in it. Starting my day off right because I'm not adding carbohydrates to my system, thus I'm breaking my fast with the same products I want to burn in my body. That's why I enjoy this Keto Coffee. It tastes good. You can see my video on how different ways to mix it. And it sets me up for the day the way I want burning the right things. I still probably have an egg and some bacon later. It's not a meal replacement, 
but it does buy me some time to start my day and have my body burning the fats that I want it to burn. That's all I've done in the last two months, and I've already lost a little over 20 pounds just by changing my coffee and my breakfast and starting the day off right. I have not been great about eliminating carbohydrates from my dinner. I've drastically reduced them, and I'm doing that for the family as a whole since I do a lot of the cooking, but I've not completely eliminated them to go into a hardcore keto state, thus I could probably be losing more weight faster if I did. Back to the whole lifestyle change, that's not something that I've done yet. I'm making incremental changes that I know I can stick with. So I'm not at my ideal weight. I'm on my way because of the lifestyle changes that we've made and we're able to integrate into our daily lives and stick to for some time now. So some interesting effects of going on a keto diet. One most commonly you're going to hear about is called the keto flu. This has to do with the chemical balances in your body changing. And some people get a rundown, almost body ache feeling for a little bit of time. This is normal because you've changed your intake drastically and your body's still adjusting. Most people up their mineral intake, such as salts and making sure you're taking a multivitamin, also increasing your hydration to help flush the things that are making you feel icky. The keto flu is very common and it, and it normally doesn't last that long. Staying on top of what you're doing will relieve it. Sure, you can stop everything cold and go get a donut. You'll probably feel better for a moment and then you'll feel icky when you crash. You can get through it, paying attention to your body and how you respond to what you're taking. Another interesting side effect that I experienced was actually an increase in tartar buildup in my teeth. Tartar is not necessarily a cavity causer. It's a buildup of minerals in your teeth because of your saliva. My dentist shared that it's common for marathon runners to develop higher levels of tartar because of the way they burn what they're eating in their high athletic state. Something to pay attention to is your dental health. I thought it was interesting that I had a little more tartar in my teeth and I brushed my teeth very well. Where did this come from? And my dentist asked, have you changed your diet? And I said, yeah, we're eating a keto diet. Oh, that's completely normal. So something to watch for. Again, each of our bodies responds differently. So pay attention to your conditions. This would be another time to, again to remind you Talk to your doctor. See your doctor before doing any drastic health changes. Pay attention to how your body's responding to the different input. If you're concerned or have any conditions that need to be managed, definitely want to talk with a health professional before and while you're doing this. If you read any of the ketogenic books, you'll see that many of these people had labs drawn before and during and after and seeing their lab levels go up and down. I don't think I even want to touch the cholesterol issue there's still some unknown science as to what that really affects. Some proponents of the keto diet will say that it really has nothing to do with it. It's more about your genetics. A lot of this sounds good to me, but your individual health risk isn't just that, your individual health risk. So talking with a health professional is what's important to manage how you're changing your lifestyle. But there's tons of information, and a lot of people have shared their journey out online. You can watch how they've gone through it. But if you have a particular condition, especially something that is something that's affecting your health, such as diabetes, stroke risk, heart attack risks, you definitely want to talk with your doctor as you decide to change your diet. Some of the specific supplements or parts of your diet, such as what's in my keto coffee, can really aid your success. One of the first ones is MCT oil, medium chain triglycerides, and they're found in coconut oils and some other places, and they tend to be extracted because... We don't want everything tasting like coconut, but they're very helpful in your body burning fats, telling your body, hey, burn these good fats. And they're very similar in chemical profile to the fats in your body. Thus, they help your body learn to burn what you're trying to get rid of. Similarly, you're going to hear grass-fed butter. Same kind of idea. Grain-fed beef is great. Has a lot of fat in it. Tastes great. Grass-fed beef turned into cream and butters is better for our bodies to identify the same fats that we're trying to burn. Because you're changing your chemical profile, you want to watch your salt intake. Not necessarily reducing it, you may need to increase it. Definitely want to drink enough water so you're still flushing all the things you're getting rid of. As your body burns fats, that produces waste products that your body needs to get rid of. Caffeine can be a touchy subject. The keto coffee I drink in the morning has some caffeine in it, but it has 75 milligrams, which is, it's half to a quarter of what you would get at a commercial coffee joint around town. 
Thus, it's not that big a hit. Caffeine is useful to our body. It increases our energy. It helps us burn fat. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but if you're sensitive to it, like my wife, you do want to watch how much caffeine you're taking. I actually mix my keto coffee with more coffee and it gives it the flavor and the caffeine hit I want to get. So I'm probably ingesting about 100, 120 milligrams of coffee in the morning, which is not that much. A diet energy drink has two, three, four times that. You can take supplemental ketones to help kick your body into that state and burn the fat. There are many great products out there. It Works provides a neat product that helps do that also. Creatine and whey are another two supplements that help your body get into this state. So, am I ever going to eat carbs again if I go strict keto? And some people would say no. But what's interesting is the longer I've been on it, the longer I've reduced my carbs, the less I crave them. And I'm a big dessert guy. Another piece of that puzzle is once your metabolism is burning much more efficiently and your body is getting down to the healthy size it needs to be and your engine's running very efficiently, you're going to burn a lot of things. An example, you could probably give a Marine anything. He can eat cake or a side of beef. As extraneous as their body is and what they're burning, it probably doesn't matter much of what you give them. Their body's going to burn everything. But most of us aren't working that hard. Cubicle lifestyles, sedentary lifestyles, sitting so much, whether it's at work or in the car, our engines are not burning efficiently. That's why it's important to really monitor what we're putting into our system. Once your system's fired up and you're burning more efficiently, a little bit of carbs here and there is not going to make a huge difference. It could throw you out of ketosis. You're not going to burn fat more efficiently. But if I get down to my ideal healthy weight, a donut in the morning is not going to put on the pounds that it used to when I was having one every morning. So don't worry that the carbs aren't going to be there. Again, my great example is the holidays. I want a slice of pumpkin pie. I want sugar cookies with my kids. So if I'm burning efficiently six, seven, ten days out of two weeks, having that sugar cookie is not going to kill me. What's really neat is the more that I've done this, the less I've craved those sugar cookies. So having one is more satiating. I don't have to sit there and have four, five, and six. Listening to how your body responds to these changes is what is key. Common effects to your body that are either unpleasant or unexpected is diarrhea. Again, any change to your diet, it's common to have diarrhea. Increase your fiber intake, whether it's a supplement, I would, I would suggest you increase your dark green vegetables or your salads. Increase your fiber intake can help alleviate that, but it's normal to the drastic change in your diet. Another one is... My urine smells funny. Again, perfectly normal because you've changed the chemical input to your body, thus your body's flushing out different chemicals and still getting used to that. The same goes with having a funny smelling breath or bad breath. You're changing the chemical makeup of your body, like I mentioned with the tartar increase, so your breath may change also. Let me share some neat resources with you. I receive no compensation from any of these sites. I don't even participate in most of them, but I found them to be neat, useful tools. One of them is, one of them is USA.YourKeto.Diet. It's a neat little online tool to identify the things that you like in your diet and what your goal is. It gives you neat data output at the end to help you target how much of different types of foods you should eat to make your goal weight in a certain amount of time. Now, they sell a product and guidance, and if you choose to, that's great. I'm a homework kind of guy. I can write this stuff down and, and track it myself. You'll see a lot of people on social media, Instagram in particular, I see people putting up what they're eating and how much they've worked out and how much weight they're losing. So you can do it yourself also, but there's some great apps out there that make it a little easier to keep the information at your fingertips as you're focusing on your day and not focusing on what you're eating. So do you need to become a biologist, a biochemist, or even a nutritionist to be able to follow a ketogenic diet and lose some weight and find a healthier you. No, you don't. Everybody responds differently. But lowering your carbohydrates, especially the bad carbs, candies, sodas, refined sugars, your body will respond. If you're looking to go into full ketosis and a full ketogenic diet, I highly suggest you look up some online resources or purchase a book or two. Because you'll have it at your fingertips to help guide you as you're doing. You can online search most of this information to put together everything you need to do by yourself also. I know some great products I like to use. Irish butter from Costco, keto coffee from It Works, full heavy cream to make my bulletproof coffee, full fat cheeses, and as low or unprocessed meats as possible. 
I am an amateur smoker of meats, thus I can control that a little more in my household, something you may want to seek out locally. You can ask questions below, add a comment, tell us if this has been good feedback for you. We'll answer everything we can, point you to other resources. We're kind of all in this journey together. We're figuring out how it works. In the big picture, we're blessed to have this kind of a problem. So let's help each other on the journey. I'm Nurse Dad. I'm Nurse Dad, and I'm happy to share my journey. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you soon.